Joining me now is Ross McLean, former Toronto police officer and security specialist. He is also a former Bank of Canada technical security specialist. Ross, thanks very much for joining us. Good to join you. What a story. Uh, where to begin? I'll, I'll let you react first. How's that? Yeah, well, what's actually interesting about this is the, the, the way the theft occurred is what typically happens at distribution centers, cargo holding centers, and shipyards. Somebody on the inside works with the truck driver who's on the outside. They pass paperwork, and then the wrong thing gets loaded onto a truck, and off it goes. What's remarkable here is the fact that this happened at a very high security location, and the amount of $20 million worth of gold is what really makes this very, very interesting. Uh, and I think the, the one part that I caught that the police talked about that we did not hear enough about was they said at the beginning they have a list of debtor sheets. So what that is is when they took the gold and they were selling it off, they found the lists of who they sold it to and who owed them money. So that's what they really got to work to track on because so far they haven't recovered really much at all of the $20 million. No, nothing. $90,000 worth of gold bangles. Uh, the gold had been turned into bangles and that was about it. Yeah, so I think that's where the, where the hunt's going to take place. Now, typically, what you see with a place like this, and this is my guesstimate of what happened here, you've got the manager on the inside. He was arrested. He oversees the shippers and receivers, so he's the one who lets the uh, the false paperwork go through. They create it. They're, he's the one that knows that the wrong shipment that gets, gets loaded on. They try their best to cover that up. Then they make the getaway with it. Now, the fact that they had a list of debtors, implies to me that they've been involved in other criminal activities where they have a list of people where they regularly probably take stolen goods from Air Canada and distribute it out somewhere. So much that the one driver here actually had his own truck, apparently, uh, that he had it to move it. So it's kind of like low-level organized crime that's able to get the score of a lifetime, if you will, for getting it. Because the guns that have been recovered so far, is not a great mess of guns. I mean, that's not a lot. It's, it's mm -hmm. not a huge shipment of guns. So I think there's lots more to, to come on this. Uh, how, how hard is it to get rid of gold? Well, gold is very international. And anybody knows, it's funny, I mean, this is out of Brampton, particularly between India and Canada and connections and gold. You can melt it down. You have all the I buy your gold places. Uh, you can melt it down. Lots of people would melt it down, put it into the things, and they can fly to another country wearing it. That's why they had jewelry that was made up, perhaps, and things like that if they don't get stopped for that. So it's something that's pretty pretty easy to move, but the hook is going to be who paid for it. How did they pay for it? Where did that money go that they paid for it? We're talking 20 million. What did they sell it for? 50 cents on the dollar? They got 10 million sitting somewhere. And would the, would the gold be moving out of the country, do you think, or would it be, could Canada get that, could thieves in Canada and criminals in Canada spread that out and, and move it through Canadian places as opposed to having to take it overseas? Well, they said that one of the persons arrested, I believe, owned a jewelry store, right? So a jewelry store has the ability to buy and move around a large, a larger number of gold, uh, obviously, than an individual person does. So we might find that that list of debtors may include a lot of jewelry stores, a lot of places that would sell gold. And that might be the something that they find to help track this down. And what about the weapons? Does that feel like that is a kind of almost secondary? That was be something being done on its own? Yeah, it does, sound, it does sound secondary. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that this other guy arrested was in Florida and was involved in this, it tells me they've been probably, this one guy anyways who was caught, which by the way, I'm not related to him, his last name's McLean, not related. You know, he was probably running guns quite often back and forth between Florida and Canada for money. So I think they've had an existing distribution, an existing crime network for doing things, and it's just a matter of trying to run it down now. But you know, that can be kind of tricky, especially if it gets international. It costs a lot of money to chase your goods when they go international. And what are your thoughts on, I think all of them are actually uh, free. They've been released, right? <laughs> Canada is the money laundering capital of the world, just about. There's just a big hearing that was held out in British Columbia a while ago. They had experts from all over the world. And they said, look, Canada, they've got all kinds of laws and a structure for dealing with money laundering. There's absolutely zero teeth to any of it. So no one's even afraid of it because no one investigates it and the penalties are so low. So it's, it's a little disheartening to see how quickly they're getting out. Okay. Ross, thank you as always for your insight.
Ross McLean is a former Toronto police officer and security specialist, also a former Bank of Canada technical security specialist.